Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Thursday. And so we got a live stream again for you today, and I'm going to do some more animation. We've been uh, on an animation kick lately. Stay hydrated, my friends. Stay thirsty, my friends. Yes. So um, today I want to get back to, we've been doing some Disney characters over the last couple of streams. We did uh, Nala, we did a Nala walk cycle. And we did a beast walking, and, uh, and so today I'm doing a polar bear walking. And um, not everything I do is characters walking, but it seems like that way uh, lately. But I'm doing a, doing an actual shot from our upcoming short that we're working on called Snow Bear. And this is one of the introductory shots that we see uh, the first time we see uh, our polar bear character. And uh, um, this is a very this is a rough. Uh, background uh, and layout of, you, of the character as you can see here I actually switch over there you go and uh, if I play it you'll see um, he's kind of revealing himself from behind there's gonna be a lot of snow blowing snow effects it's probably hard to see on your phones if you're watching on a phone but he's he's kind of small in the shot and he's just kind of walking through right now um, I'm, I'm uh, animating this in 4k and so right now my computer is having a hard time playing it back at the right rate. It's actually playing back a little bit slow, probably about a third too slow. Uh, but you can get the action and, um, um, and uh, you can see that he's going to make his way across. And right about the mountain there over on the left side, I'm going to have him pause, look around, and then continue out of the shot. So it's really just a... Just a, a, an introductory shot of him to show his loneliness, where he is in the world, all that kind of stuff. It's it's uh, it's really there's a whole series of shots in the beginning that kind of introduce the world of the Arctic, and then we introduce our bear coming into that world, and so that's that's what we're doing. So he's just kind of walking along and acting like a polar bear. So that's what I'm going to animate today, and um, and then meanwhile I'm going to take your questions. And basically what I can do here is I can take away this overlay on the front right there. By taking that away, it might play back a little quicker. Yeah, it plays back a little bit quicker. And you can see, even though there's an overlay there, I like to animate all the way through just so that the action, the movement feels right. And, uh, and so uh, that's what I do there. So you'll see... There's a lot of drawing that I've done that actually doesn't end up on the screen. It ends up uh, behind the overlay. And it also, what that does is it, it kind of gives me the option to move the animation up and down if I need to. So uh, so that's a little bit there. Meanwhile, I've got my trusty Dusty Dustin over here. <laughs> and, uh, Hi. Hi. Hey, it's we not got, frozen this it's time. It's not Yay. frozen. That's Holy great. <laughs> Did I touch him? <laughs> And we've got Nick Birch, my business partner. He's in Sarasota, and uh, he's going to be answering questions as well on YouTube and Twitch and all the other platforms that we are streaming on. And uh, the other thing, too, is I want to remind you guys, I know I keep sounding like a broken record, but we are doing our first master class August 3rd and 4th here in Orlando, and uh, we're really excited about it. It's going to be me uh, talking to you guys for two days live um, at the Repertory Theater in downtown Orlando and I'm going to be talking about animation, character design, creature design, digital painting, uh, story structure, all kinds of different things, all different things that uh, I've been, I've had experience with over the last 30 years of my career at Disney and other studios. And if you're a student or a teacher, uh, check it out. Uh, you're going to get 50% or $50, up to $50 off the tickets. So head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com backslash Orlando 2019 and check it out. Otherwise, if you're also interested in other animation lessons, things like that that we have on the site, just go to CreatureArtTeacher.com. We've got a lot of stuff happening there. And also, we've got a big sale happening. And also real quick, for the master class, uh, somebody on my Instagram asked me if... Um uh, he would, if he was allowed to bring his own art materials, if he yes, wants to follow if you along. Yes, if you want to bring your own art materials and follow along with me during the uh, master class, during the master class, then by all means, it's going to be theater seating. But if you can draw on your lap, type on your lap, that type of thing, then then by all means, do it. I encourage it. Uh, and then also, we've got a big sale happening for this weekend. 
coming up and it's uh, the buy more save more sale on our website so it's all art lessons animation tutorials and Photoshop brushes are 20% off or more if you buy two you save 30% if you buy three you save 40% so the more you buy the more you save so uh, go check that out it's a really great sale everyone really loves that one when we do it so um, let's get into the animation I want to jump into that and right off the bat we've got a YouTube question is snow bear a quadruped or a bi biped or does he change now snow bear is a quadruped I want him to be well the snow bear is the snow bear our real bear is quadruped bear. he's our polar bear we've named him Glenn after Glenn Keane so it's my homage to Glenn mm. Keane my mentor Glenn Keane uh, but he um, he uh, as you can see he comes in and he is uh, he's a quadruped now there's gonna be times that he's standing on two legs uh, but I would say he's normally a quadruped okay so that's uh, uh, there you go. Uh, and the sale, by the way, that sale I was just mentioning, the buy more, get, uh, buy more, save more sale, that is live right now. So if you go over to the website, creatureartteacher.com, you can buy more and save more. So Facebook, or Facebook, I don't know why I just said Facebook. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, YouTube? You no, uh, uh, TV paint. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I had a clog in my brain. Um, no, TV paint has this great feature. You know, I'm doing this in 4K, so the bear is actually really tiny in here in this shot. This is the full shot, but I have the ability when I want to draw, like I'm going to do now, I can go in and go boop, 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 blow it up, just like that, and we are good to go. I gotta find, here's my next drawing right here. So I'm gonna put a new drawing right there. Now I can back up right about here. Bring that down in there. Hit my full page. Now you can see he's walking along. I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, onion skin on. And you can see what I've had him do is he's brought his head back down polar bears as they walk really do you know they're being led by their noses and so they're they're walking along looking 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 they'll drop their nose and smell and so I really want this to feel like a polar bear when we first see him and so I'm trying to get that sense so he's uh, he's already dropped his head down he came up you know up the hill with his head up then he's dropped it down now he's gonna bring it back up again are you aiming at 24 frames per second I am I am animating at 24 frames per second. And I'm animating just the keys right now. So, um, like right now, you can see his front legs are spread apart, and the, and the back legs, one leg is straight underneath while the other leg is coming forward. The next key is going to be this leg coming forward with the leg straight underneath and the back leg spread apart. Those are the keys. And I animate just the keys as I animate a character walking along. And then I'll go back down, back in and uh, break it down. And for the uh, master classes, somebody uh, commented, uh, I would suggest maybe doing a quarterly master class in different regions across the continental U.S., like one in each time zone per year. We, uh, we would love to do that. So here, um, if I look at the spacing, I'm going to push that spacing here, and I'm I'm really keeping it fairly clean as I as I animate as well. But I want to find that back. That's the first thing I want to find. And what's happening is the shoulder blade is going to go up, and the hips are going to come down as he steps. YouTube question: How do you paint your backgrounds in TV Paint? I actually do them in Photoshop. Now you can paint in TV paint, uh, but I've, I'm more comfortable in Photoshop, and so um, uh, that's where I paint them. His foot here, his little butt's coming around. <laughs> Not a little butt, it's a big butt. And that back foot is going to be placed right about here right where the front foot was. 
see where this foot right here is going to come up and it's going to be replaced by the back back leg right here and you're just walking along I'm actually going to pull this back that shoulder back just a little bit he's getting a little big for me there we go so are you doing this uh, with a plain like thumbnail or are you just drawing right through it am I say that again like, um, I'm having a brain fart right now that's okay um, like is this what you would call um, where this, you just animate through it or this is straight ahead straight animation. ahead that's what you're asking right that's what I'm asking yeah this is straight ahead animation now granted you could you could say it's you know I'm, I'm hitting key poses but this is not considered key pose, pose to pose. Pose to pose. Yeah, because I'm I'm hitting I'm basically going straight ahead. Now, but I am hitting keys. There's drawings that are going to go in between. There's two drawings that go in between each of these. And I'm going to be animating it. Ultimately, it will be finished animation on twos, meaning one drawing for every two frames. Because the the movement is slow enough, I can get away with it being one drawing every two frames. So okay, now here, I was having a real brain freeze right there. That's okay. <laughs> and I want that other shoulder blade to come down. Now look, see how his head is coming up now? I want that head to come up. And polar bears have pretty long necks. And they're pretty slender, uh, uh, sleek looking. you got this nice shape that comes through the body right here. He's going to raise his head up. Andy Latham from Traveler's Tales on YouTube. Andy, it's good to see you. Andy Latham uh, on YouTube asks, have you always drawn your initial keys that cleanly, Aaron? No, I, I don't always. If, if, I'm, um, if, I'm, uh, if I'm not sure uh, where the animation is going or if, I'm not, um, if it's broader animation, then I don't draw this cleanly. But this, I, this is pretty simple animation. And... Um, and it's really straightforward and so I'm trying to save myself some time by animating pretty clean straight ahead but I don't always there's some other animation that, that actually I played for you guys over at Traveler's Tales when we were there where the where the polar bear is bounding in and bouncing around and playing in the snow that initially was fairly loose and then I went in and, and tied it all down so um, I just I just know the character pretty well at this point I've drawn him a few thousand times and um, and I know the uh, the walk cycle for this is pretty simple for this guy, and uh, and so no, I, I I'm saving myself some time by just coming in and going pretty pretty tied down right off the bat. Manuel uh, asks, uh, you talked many times about what you've learned from Glenn. Uh, can you talk about if you have learned something from any of your other animation partners or coworkers? Oh, I learned. Oh, yeah, I, I learned. You know, initially I learned a lot from Glenn Keane, but I've learned stuff from everybody I've worked with. It'd be hard for me to specify exactly what I've learned from everybody. But you know, for years I worked with Mark Hen. Um, you know, while I was doing my characters, he was doing the opposite characters. So while I, while I was doing Nala, Mark Hen was working on on Simba. We worked together very closely on a lot of characters. While I was doing Raja, he was doing Princess Jasmine. While I was doing Beast, he was doing Belle. And so, and he was a much more seasoned animator um, and very, very prolific. He was one of the fastest animators in the studio. And I really learned a lot from him. Uh, a lot. One of the biggest things I learned from Mark is I, rem I remember having some trouble figuring out an expression. And he sat down and showed me, you know, you know, a happy face is this. You know, don't go that far off of that. When you're drawing your character's expressions, you know, it's like if I'm drawing this bear, I want to think about that happy face. You know, there's, here's his face. Just draw the happy face, uh, you know, over the model of your bear. And it clarifies the expression. Do you draw you know, the background in each frame? A background? No, the background is a held cell. 
So that's uh, that's one of the things I learned from from Mark Kent. No, the the uh, you got to listen to what I'm saying because I wasn't quite done on that one, Dustin. I apologize. That's all right. But um, the um, the uh, the background is a held cell, and so like let me show you. I, uh, I'm going to jump back. View fit. So here now now here's the full scale of of everything, and so the elements here are this. It's going to be. Let me do this. It's even smaller, I know, but let me break it all down. I'm going to turn off the animation layer, and here's our background layer right here. I've only got it set to 50. That's the actual color of the background layer. And then on top of that, and that layer just holds through the whole thing. And then on top of that comes the, our, our character layer. Whoops, that's the color layer, sorry. Here's our character layer right here. So there's our character layer, and right now he's transparent because he hasn't been painted. And then there's a layer over that which, where he's walking behind, okay? And so if I play this, it's going to play too slow, but you'll at least get a sense of his movement. He's coming up behind, and you can see him walking along this ridge. That's the idea. I want him coming up from behind this hill, and he's walking along this ridge. It's just, right now I have these on sixes, meaning each drawing is held for six frames, but it's actually holding for about ten frames. Because right now, this is a 4K... Uh, image and my computer is having a hard time keeping up with the memory. If I was doing this at 1080, it would be playing back better. But uh, I need a little bit stronger memory in my. Or is it RAM or memory or what do um, I need to get it to play back at the right rate? Yeah, this would probably be a a, a CPU or processor yeah issue. So I, Nick I knows. But anyway, uh, so that those are all the layers for this shot. And then there's going to be effects layers. There's going to be snow blowing and. Uh, there's going to be a paint layer where I have to paint the you know, the, the bear coming in. There's going to be a layer for shadows. Um, I, even though it's flat light, I want to have a little bit of darkness underneath him to anchor him to the ground. So there's going to be a few different layers in here, and all of those get composited together to create the shot. Uh, YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. Is it true that Ghibli films, uh, there are half of the frame compared to Disney films? Uh, Ghibli animation seems so fluid. No, it's actually true. Ghibli Films does a lot of stuff on sixes and fours, meaning each drawing is held for four or six frames, whereas at Disney, we never held a drawing longer than two, uh, two frames. Uh, so the, the, the animation was much more fluid. Uh, and by doing that, you can save a lot of money on your production because you literally are doing half the drawings. And I'm, I'm a big support, fan of that. And I, I, you know, I, I love Ghibli Films, and it's amazing how much... You can get across with so few drawings. It's very, very cool. I, uh, actually, before I have one uh, quick uh, background question, you already answered part of it because of the opacity. Um, but does the background at all get uh, distracting for you when you're when you're animating with the background on? Yes, and so that's a good question. So that's why uh, usually I keep it in a line form, but this time it was such a simple one. I decided to to put the color one in, but I just dropped the opacity way down. I just dropped the opacity down. And I've already kind of marked where that ridge line is. And so I turned that layer off right there. And now it might actually play a little quicker. Uh, now you can see the animation of him walking up. And there's that ridge line is right along there. I'll just keep his feet just behind that. How low is that opacity right now? Uh, it's at like 20%. Oh, wow. Maybe even 15%. And then the top layer is just turned off. Right. So but you can still see that white line. Yeah. Uh, let me do this really quick. I've got to get to the end of... Was that intentional to show where the the hill mark mark is? Yeah, I did I did the, the initial drawing, the initial painting. I did it as one flat layer. Then I broke it up into layers. Gotcha. Um, YouTube question. Hello, question for Aaron. Are you using any reference video for Snow Bear? Uh, I used, I looked at a lot of reference um, before as I was designing him. Right now I'm not using reference, no. I'm just, I've got it in my head. I've watched a lot of polar bear videos and so I'm just keeping it in my head and moving straight ahead that way. And what I try to do is I get the impression of, of the bear and what they do and, and then I try to add a little bit of personality to it and that's, that's basically what I'm trying to do now. 
Uh, that way, it doesn't feel like I've rotoscoped it or copied live action, which I think kind of kills it a little bit. I want it to feel like it's its own thing. So here I'm drawing another, getting another one done. Are you for another question? Yep, the hips are going to come up. Go ahead. Uh, for Snow Bear, do you do all of your in-betweens and cleanups, or do you have assistant artists? I'm doing all of my in-between. Well, I'm not doing any cleanups on this. We're going to keep it rough. And um, right now it's just me. And we got Nick and Dustin that are going to help with coloring and... Nick might even not animate a shot or two. I don't know. We can get him in there. But right now it's just me. Uh, YouTube comment. Hi, Aaron. I've been watching your videos since May. In less than a month, both my art and animation has improved. Thank you so much for all of the tips. Hey, I'm glad that you that has happened for you. That's, uh, that's the whole point of why we've done this. So that makes me super happy. So here, I've got his butt coming up because he's, his leg is going to come straight underneath him. Have you considered making a course at Schoolism? Uh, well, Schoolism and I, we, we do basically the same thing. I just got done doing a lecture with Schoolism in London uh, with Bobby Chu. Bobby Chu is the owner of Schoolism. We're good friends, but we're also somewhat competitive competitors and uh, so I mean we uh, we really we do a lot of stuff together but as far as doing courses um, I've got my own website for doing courses and if you uh, check it out go to creatureartteacher.com and I've got a lot of the same stuff that schoolism has and actually and if I don't have something that you're looking for go check out schoolism because they might have something that uh, that I don't have that you're looking for we try to support each other as much as we can and uh, uh, Bobby's a great guy. There's got great instruction on there. And um, we really, I really, you know, like I said, if you can't find something on our site, go check out theirs. And, uh, and once again, I want to remind you guys, we've got a big sale going on. Um, more you buy, the more you save. And uh, it's, you know, it starts out 20% off of everything <coughs> on the site. But if you buy two, you buy, you save 30%. Buy three, you save 40%, and so on. So uh, check it out. And now here, I want to bring his head up again. And as he brings his head up, you'll notice the, the meat in his neck is going to kind of, the meat, the muscle in his neck is going to uh, kind of start to bunch up. In 2D animation, since I guess the mid-90s, uh, vehicles like common cars or ships are animated in 3D while the rest is in 2, 2D. Is there any special difficulty on animating vehicles traditionally compared to organic props? Yeah, organic props are easier because you can, you know, the shapes change and all that. Uh, uh, hard surfaces for uh, animating by hand tend to be a little harder because they, those are hard surfaces. They don't change and they change if you're... The only thing they do change is, is, is perspective, which is hard to do on, you know, geometric shaped objects, hard shaped objects. And so a lot of times, and those are very easy to build uh, in 3D. So that's why a lot of times those are handed over to the 3D department, because, uh, you know, they don't generally squash and stretch as much as, you know, character stuff does, and um, it's just easier to do. Um, 3D, and that's why we do that. I've got another question up here. Kayleen asks, Aaron, what do you prefer? What do you prefer, the process or the result? <laughs> that's a very good question. I love the result. The process, I love the process in the beginning, and then I get bored. And I get, it's one of the reasons I love what we do now, because everything's kind of short format. Um, when I worked on Brother Bear, uh, you know, I was on that film for six years. That was a long haul for me. And, uh, you know, working on a film for six years is, that's a lot. And so 
the process is great to a to a certain degree, and then I get I get really really ready for the next one. I'm ready to move on. Uh, YouTube question: How old were you when you started animating, and what was your first animation? I was 20 years old when I first started animating, and my first animation was a flower sack. <clears throat> Or it may have been a bouncing ball. I can't remember if we actually did the bouncing ball or if I went right to the flower sack. I think I went right to the flower sack. And uh, I don't think I ever did the bouncing. I mean, I did later, but uh, my first thing was the flower sack. The first thing I ever saw shot and actually moving. So there's our little section right here. I'm moving, I'm walking along. You can see him raising his head up, sniffing the air again. I'm going to have him start to move his head. Maybe you look Sorry. up, maybe you look away a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't know if I want to have him looking away for a chunk of this. That's a little bit of a... I don't think I'm going to do that, actually. And once again, also, um, if you're just coming in and you haven't heard, I know I sound like a broken record, but come see us August 3rd and 4th. In Orlando, we're doing our first master class August 3rd and 4th at the Repertory Theater in downtown Orlando. Uh, eight hours each day where I'm going to be talking about uh, animation I'm going to, and live demos too. Uh, character design, creature design, digital painting, story, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time. You know, you sound like a broken record when you just say you sound like a broken record. I know, right? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, are you going to just fill the animation with color using the bucket tool, or are you going to actually paint it in? I'll probably paint it because it's um, uh, it's rough animation, and there's a lot of little detaily areas, and so I usually just create a new layer uh, underneath and uh, and do it that way. And a person asked uh, about the sale. So if I buy 10, is it free? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good thinking, though. That would have been my thinking. <laughs> I bet you're the guy that if someone gives you three wishes, one of your wishes is ultimate, is uh, infinite wishes. <laughs> Be one of those people like if so if I buy twenty items, does that mean I get money back? Like you owe me money? <laughs> you owe me money? <laughs> Actually I wanna drop his hips down. I'm gonna drop them down here. Bring those shoulders up. Do you find it easier animating from the back end of the animal when animating it moving forward? I've noticed that how you seem to be animating Snow Bear. No, I'm just looking at his shape in general. I'm looking at this teardrop shape, and I guess I am kind of working my way forward because I'm just I'm I can see the spacing of the butt, and I'm looking at the onion skin spacing, making sure I'm keeping it consistent because I want his his speed to be consistent. So I guess you're right. I guess I am kind of working forward. It's not a conscious thing. It's just, whoops. It's just uh It's a subconscious thing. It's, it's a subconscious thing, yeah. <laughs> Do you miss a lot if you, uh, if I can only come one day during the master class? You'll miss half. Miss half. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You'll miss half the lessons if you're half, if you're there half um, the we, time. We will post the schedule um, we'll post the schedule soon. Uh, we don't have the schedule all worked out yet, but we'll post the schedule soon, and you'll be able to see if you're only able to come for one day. You can kind of pick what 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 you want to come for. And for the latecomers, did you make the background in TV Paint? No, I made the background in Photoshop, and then I imported it. Is it easy to import uh, backgrounds you made in Photoshop into TV Paint? Very easy. I'll show you right here. I can go zero. Uh, there's a there's a little bar right down here on the lower left. I don't know if you can magnify that or not. You can't. Can not you? at the moment. But um. Well, actually, you can you can with the uh, cursor 
Icon. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we got what we got for. Uh, where? Uh, what is it? Is it this one? It's the. Um Oh, the schedule is up on the page. Nick says the schedule is up. So check out the schedule, and you'll be able to see uh, what day you want. Is it this one right here? It's shipping there. Uh, you know what, maybe? Click, uh, just, click on, just click on the screen. Uh, let me screen? go to apps. Yeah. Go to my apps. And it's going to be cursor. Was it Cursor? What was it called? I think it was Cursor. Cursor Pro. Cursor Pro. There it is. Oh, there it is. Now it's popped up. There we go. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Yep. And turn, turn it on. on. Yeah, and I think it's function. If you hold down function, you can zoom it in. It's either function or command. Is that function? Yeah. There Look it is. Look at that. Aha. Hey. See, we got <laughs> hey. everything here. It works. It works. So, uh, there's a little tab down here um, uh, where if, you, if I click on it, oh, nothing works if I have the cursor thing on. Oh, really? Yeah, it doesn't work. Oh, there we go. Oh, you now, right here. I just it won't work with if I use my my stylus. Um, down here uh, at the very bottom, it says import footage, and if I click on that, it gives me I can pick a file from anywhere, and uh, in this case, it would be a, a JPEG file, and I can or a PNG file, and I can bring them in, and it loads them up. There you go. It's really simple. So well, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw. Uh, I'm gonna see if this is really distracting to draw with. It might be a little too distracting for me to draw. You can just turn it off. Well, then I want people to be able to see where I'm drawing. Uh huh. Let me just let me just see if. Ah, uh, no, it's driving me nuts. Already. <laughs> Ours driving me nuts. Now, six years. Is this a typical amount of time to make an animated movie? Uh, right now it's about four to five years now. I know back in the old days, back in the 40s, you know, with Bambi and some of those other films, it took them seven years. Because there's a lot of drawing involved. It's a lot of work. As an animator, does one normally have the duty to design the character or just in certain cases? And uh, when we were doing 2D movies, um, it was all, you know, the supervising animator was always in charge of designing their characters. You know, Glenn Keane designed the Beast. Uh, Andreas Deja, you know, designed Scar and, and Jafar. Um, it was, those were, it was part of our duties as, as supervising animators to do that. You know, I designed Nala, I designed Raja. And we would get together, you know, every week and make sure that our animation um, or our designs were consistent, that they all fit in the same movie. There we go. Nick says, oh, Nick said, that once again, I want to tell you that the schedule for the, for the event is actually up on the website. So go to the website, creatureartteacher.com backslash Orlando 2019 and you'll see all kinds of information there and if you only can go for one day you'll see what schedule you might want to pick instead. YouTube question. I hope that the question has been made already but did you do the animation of the polar bear to make the people aware of climate change too? Nope. We're not really there might be a few environmental sub themes in here but this is really not about an environmental message. There's that's just not, uh, it's really about a polar bear who's lonely and he finds friendship and in a, in a, makes a snow bear. That's the premise. Very simple story. So let me bring this back now and I'm going to fit this to screen. We've gotten a few new drawings in, so I just, I, I 
want to check the animation and you can see just doing those keys it really helps work you know and I just slowly work my way across the screen I know where I need to go and in this case I don't have an ending for the shot so I'm just gonna let the shot be as long as it needs to be normally the shot would already be figured out as far as length um, and uh, and I'd have to work to that length uh, in this case I'm uh, I'm just leaving it open-ended and letting letting the animation really dictate the length of the shot And so there he is. He's just moving, moving slowly across, trying to be lifting his head, sniffing. There. Um, should or would there be a separate level um, or layer for animating hair if the character has lots of long hair? Uh, it depends. Weird. I mean, if it really has a life of its own, then sure. Uh, you know, a lot of times you'll um, they can put it on another layer. Uh, I know Pocahontas. There was times where she had a different layer. I was actually going to ask about that. Like yeah. the um, the uh, first uh, scene when they first see the waterfall. Yeah. Like what? When uh, her hair is uh, yeah. When she's just face. standing there and the hair is moving, then they'll yeah. put the hair on another layer, oh. on another level. They'll take it to a whole double level. level. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Are you happy with the camera system in TV Paint? I haven't really gotten into the t camera system yet. I'm educating myself on it. Uh, we haven't figured it out just yet. I just grabbed the wrong thing there. No, we haven't figured it out just yet. So. With that being said, uh, I don't know yet. Um, if I can't get it to work, I, I'm, I, I, we've we've basically figured it out. It's not something that I've done a whole lot of yet. Uh, I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to work just great. And uh, because I'd rather do my camera work uh, in TV Paint than having to composite uh, in Premiere, which is what I've done in the past. You know, I know I've, you know, I've got TV paint videos out right now, and it's all pretty basic, forward, straightforward stuff. I haven't really had to go through and create, you know, shot by shot, uh, uh, short yet. And so I'm educating myself as we go along. There we go. YouTube question. This is very cool. How do you make a short film or animation? Like, how do you know how to make a good story? Well, that, you know, making a good story is uh, that just comes from years of practice and um, I uh, I've, luckily I've had years of practice and the the key to I think telling a good story is keeping things simple and being honest and let it you know have a strong simple plot that allows you especially in a short like I'm doing that allows your character to be that character. Let it be some, you know, what they call character driven. And this is very character driven. This is about a polar bear who, you know, sees life in a snow bear and and it's all the fun he has through his imagination with a snow bear. And you know, you can't get much more character driven than that. I know you're talking about animation and snow bear at the moment, but I was wondering what the company name was for that awesome art bag you have. Once again, Lilo Rosh. Lilo Rosh. Dot com. They're awesome. Yeah, for that, and actually, let me let me give a, do a plug for them because they are fantastic. Lilo Rosh. Um, uh, where's my bag? Me back. Where's me back? Me back. Hand me that one down there. Uh, this one? Yep, they're both down there. You want both of them or just this one? This, was, this one's fine. This, this is, is one I got a couple of years ago. Um, 
Lilo Rush, they make these handmade art bags. These are called Arties. And uh, they're custom made. So you tell them what you want and they will make it for you. They have their standard uh, design and then you tell them they give you choices for the fabric. You can customize the design. You can do all kinds of stuff. They've made some beautiful bags. This one I've had for about four years and every seam is still perfect. And I've taken this bag all over the world and uh, the buttons are still attached. I mean everything's right spot on. And so when you open it up you've got a big pocket right here and then you got places to put all of your all of your drawing utensils I use mine for painting for drawing for all kinds of stuff so you've got that you've got pockets on the sides this flop folds over and there's a magnetic clips there you've got a zipper back here with more storage area inside there and it's all in a nice cloth soft bag and uh, it's fantastic and they're handmade in India by my friends at Lilo Rosh so go check them out it's Lilo Rosh oh, did they lose me did you lose me uh, just now okay we can you go to there we go all right so Lilo Rosh dot com uh, L I L O R O S H dot com Lilo Rosh there you go. Awesome bags. And do Give they them some love? Do they strictly do art bags or kit or do they also do bags for like uh, cameras or things like that? Right now they're just doing art bags, but I'm sure if you contact them, uh, you would be able to set something up. I've got they've got little ones too. Look at this one. Hmm. Little arties. I've got one right here. It's your little art purse. Yeah, it's my clutch. You clutch. <laughs> it's my art clutch. But you can see I've already set it up. I've got stuff in there with a little art, uh, little pad right there. It's fantastic. So they've got little size, you know, all kinds of sizes. I've got almost every single one. <laughs> I'm, I'm hooked on Lilo Rush. I think they're great. And this one I still keep it in its box. Try to keep it nice and neat. Lilo Rush. There you go. So there, you got a big answer on that one. Uh, YouTube question. I hope... Oh, blah, 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 uh, no, that's a different one. Uh, I already answered that one. Twitch question. When you're making this kind of animation, are you already thinking of the timing of the movement, or did you draw first and then think of the timing? I'm already thinking of the timing. So uh, as I'm spacing, as I'm drawing and spacing them, I'm imagining each drawing being held for about six frames. That's giving me the pace that I'm going to want. I, mean, I think I am going to start to turn his head a little bit. I've got to think about those shoulders coming around. That one's going to come forward right about in here. Got anything else, Dustin? Or were you I, up I, all night? I was just were you about, up all night? No, I was just about to read one. <laughs> in the studio, and from your experience, both as an animator and a director, what is the proper professional way to deal with the disagreement so there's not unnecessary heat uh, conflicts uh, going on? Heated well, conflicts. ultimately, the person in charge has to make the final decision. And, um, and that's usually the director. And, uh, but you want to do it in a way that's not dictatorial. You don't want to be the dictator, but you want to, you know, ultimately it's going to be the director's, it's the director's vision, really. And they, and whoever's part of that, they've got to understand that. And if they can't understand that, then they might need to move on because that's, you know, at the end of the day, you're there to support the, the vision of the film but and and we and I try to make it as much of a democracy as possible because you know I, I think everyone should have a say in the film that we're making but at times there are places where people just disagree and 
you know, especially from a story standpoint, and if, if the you know if I have a certain vision for what the story needs to be, and I feel like you know one one person's version is not taking it in the right direction, then then that's you know that's the decision I'm going to make, and we'll have to move on from there. And it'll be up to that person to be able to understand that and take that. And um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much how it works. You know, you just have to you have to, but you don't want to be jerky about it. You don't want to be a, di a, a dictator about it. You know, um, and and always remember that you know, as a director, this is not your movie. It's everyone's movie. You're you're all working on it together. But it, it might be your vision, but you know, it really is a group effort. And so often I see people, you know, directors that I know. They're saying, "Hey, my movie's on. You know, my my movie is finished. Come check out my movie." Blah blah blah. No, at that point, when the movie is done, it's not your movie. A lot of people worked on that film. That, that's a really big pet peeve of mine. Will there be music in this short? Uh, if so, do you know who who will be composing it, or you haven't reached that part yet? I have not reached that part yet. There is going to be music. It's going to be background score. There won't be singing. Um, it's going to be scored, but I don't know who's going to do it yet. It would be a little weird for a bear to sing. <laughs> Tell everybody I'm on my way. <laughs> but Keena never sang. It was only Koda. <laughs> Koda was a bear. He's a cub. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hair splitter. Uh... YouTube question. What factors do you take into account when deciding to do straight ahead versus key animation? Straight ahead ver uh, animation for me is always action based. And in this case I just have a character that's really walking across the screen. So that to me is very much straight ahead you know, animation. If I, if I have a character that's acting and emoting and is going to be literally hitting poses within that, that acting, then that's going to be pose to pose animation. And a lot of times, if it's broad pose to pose, it'll be a combination of the two, where I'll have them hitting poses, and then I'll have to get into some straight ahead and go back and forth. But usually, it's one or the other, okay? But pose to pose animation really is, especially in characters that are having a conversation with each other, um, and, you know, like mid-shot, you know, uh, uh, like head and shoulder type shots, um, they tend to be more pose to pose. How do you work out movements in an animation when you want it to flow with a song or music uh, on an animal? Well, the first thing I do is I try to find the timing of the, the rhythm. What's the timing and frames of the rhythm of that music? And, I and then I listen to that music over and over and over again and try to see it in my head. And I, I have to obviously uh, understand what's supposed to be happening in the shot as well. You know, when we're doing a musical, a, you know, musical is not a break in the storytelling. The music has to help tell the story. So you need to understand what's supposed to be happening from a story standpoint in that shot or, or scene as well. Uh, what's the big differences between uh, tigers, lions, and leopards? Sometimes when I'm drawing a tiger, it ends up looking like a lion. Well, tigers and lions are actually very, genetically very, very similar. If you look at a tiger skull and a lion skull, they're, they're almost identical. It takes a real expert to tell the two apart. Genetically, they're very, very close to each other. Whereas leopards are, you know, that's a, that's a very different species, much smaller size than the two. Um, and so obviously they're, they're easier to, to distinguish from. Is leopard also the one that has the forehead? Or is that a... Well, a snow leopard has a bit of a forehead. Snow leopard. But here's a leopard right here, actually. There's a leopard a skull. There's a lion skull. <laughs> so there's a leopard and there's a lion. You can really see the difference right there. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah, so there's a huge size difference. Do you have a tiger skull as well, or is it just lion? No, ti a ti I, I don't have a tiger skull, but a tiger skull really is not much different than this. They're very, very, very close. But there's there's your difference right there.
And since we're drawing polar bears, <laughs> why not get Dustin to sing in the short? <laughs> there we go. Since we're drawing polar bears, that's the bear skull. That's a polar bear skull. Oh, that's a polar bear skull. This is a specific, yes, yeah, specifically a polar bear. Specifically? Specifically. Look at that. You can bite my head right off. Crunch. Yeah. It's a big, big animal. And you'll notice on a polar bear, they're much flatter uh, in their in their profile. Imagine that nose and the cartilage coming right out. They don't have much of a forehead at all. It's really, really flat right there. As opposed to a grizzly bear, which has a lot more of a forehead. See that forehead right there? So they're built quite a bit differently. But that's a that's a grizzly bear right there. Where can people get these skulls? These are bone clones. So go go to boneclones.com. I think it's boneclones.com. Uh, these are all reproductions. Just look up bone clones. I can't remember if it's boneclones.com or 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 what, but I get them from bone clones, uh, and they're uh, really beautifully cast uh, replicas. I only have a few real skulls. I don't want to be in the business of animals losing their lives for me to have their, their bones. YouTube question. When you're animating, drawing after drawing like this, how big is the risk of size mistakes? It looks so effortless when you do it, but I think my bear would have been twice the size by frame 12. You know what? I used to have that same problem. This is, it just comes from years of, of practice. I'm, it, it's something that I'm always thinking about. So when you see me look, you know, going back and forth and I'm like ticking off where the butt is and all that, a big part of what I'm doing is I'm making sure the size is staying consistent. That's a big part of what I'm doing. I want to make sure that size is consistent and then I'm, I'm hitting that pose. But that was a good question. I'm going to try turning <laughs> that head. I'm going to turn his head just a little bit here. I want him looking away. You can see, see, I've already got a mistake going. See how that neck is, and the head is growing a little bit. I'll pull that back just a, just a hair. I don't know if it's a, if you're watching on a phone, you might not be able to see it as, as strongly. Did you see the video of the polar bear trying to get into the bubble the Arctic photographer ran into? It's pretty intense. Yes, it is. That's one of the things. Polar bears, um, they're a scary animal. If you encounter a polar bear on the ice, get away. They basically, they will eat you. Their world is so scarce uh, as far as finding food, they will eat anything they find. And if they find you on the ice, you will be eaten. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> it's basically. pretty scary. <laughs> so let me do this. There we go. So here he is just walking along. That pace feels pretty good. But you see, he's just he's just basically being a bear at this point. He's just wandering. You know, polar bears are the ultimate wanderers. They just wander hundreds and hundreds of miles in search of food. It's a lonely, lonely existence, which is really the inspiration behind this whole short. You know, putting my own human values into that to be that lonely and live in existence. What, you know, what might you do? <laughs> hey, look, Dustin. There's a singing bear. Hmm. 
Uh, I'm getting you so much backlash. bear sing all the time, Dustin. Uh, bear necessities. But not this particular bear. <laughs> well, this bear is not supposed to have dialogue throughout the short, right? That's what I was trying to get at before. <laughs> so, YouTube questionnaire. What's your opinion on the movies by Sylvan Chalmay, like Triplets of Belleville? Dustin, what do we think of Triplets of Belleville? Oh, I love it. Yeah. We, Absolutely love we it. loved Triplets of Belleville. Absolutely loved it. I could watch his films, their films, the, 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 those films over and over and over again. I just love them. So, we're getting a nice little walk cycle moving across. Um, I want to get him. I'm gonna have him, like I said. I'm gonna have him look, look over to to the right side. I think I decided just to go ahead and do it. And and the person to the person that asked me about the character growing, he actually does grow. If you look at the drawings over on the right, like through here, look at him there compared to here. Now I I meant to keep them basically the same size. Luckily he grows, but it feels like he's gotten a little closer, which is he has. So it was a, to me it was a happy accident, a happy mistake. Uh, for the late cars, are you currently using 4K resolution? I am doing 4K resolution, yes, which is one of the reasons why I can't get it. I'm having trouble getting it to play back at speed for me. Uh, there's a lot of processing that has to be done in there. Uh, but yes, I'm animating this at 4K. So you can see how tiny that animation is as he walks across the screen. And the reality is, I'm drawing him. We this still thing. have recordings of live sessions, right? Oh yeah, yep. Uh, all these live sessions get posted on YouTube, and uh, and they're archived in my YouTube on my uh, 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 my business page on Facebook. You stayed up all night, didn't you? I no, can I see didn't. it. I can see it in your face. I went to bed at midnight. I just woke up early for some reason. Oh, gotcha. All right. All right, I'll give that one to you. Oh, I got to put a... I got to make a new drawing. So, we're slowly making our way across the screen here. David on YouTube asks, Aaron, hey, what's your opinion on... Oh, I already did that one. Uh, Twitch question. Uh, did you watch the Netflix documentary called Our Planet? There is one episode about polar bears. I have. I, I watched it a lot, actually. That that little section is super uh, inspirational. Are X sheets still in use in the professional animation pipeline? If so, are there any resources you'd recommend for learning how to use and apply them? Well, for 2D, I'm assuming they're still applied, because I don't know how you would do it otherwise, but I just don't know. Um, I'm not sure who's using them. Uh, what are X sheets? An X sheet is basically, it's the guide that show that it's, it's like the, it's the, the roadmap for every animated shot in, in the film. So let's say you have a shot um, when that you know it, drawings and layers and all that stuff they start at different places in the shot and end at different places and they're layered at different you know in different ways and you need instructions on how to do that and the X sheet is the instruction so let's say I have a, a, a animated a shot and some of them some of the drawings are on twos and some of them are on ones mm -hmm. well it's the X sheet where I, where I explain all that the X sheet is literally broken up into every frame so when I put a drawing down, I'm showing that it's held for two frames or just for one frame. And it's stacked in a certain way where you show layers. And so everything is on that exposure sheet. So somewhat like a time sheet? Yeah. Yeah. They also call them dope sheets. Dope sheets. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so dope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you when, probably uh, said this. I'm sorry. You probably said this before, but... But when will this movie be out, and which media will it be available on, like Netflix or what? Well, um, two years ago, I was said it was going to be out last year. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'm not saying when it's going to be out, because we don't know. We, we're trying desperately to get it done. Um, we're hoping it's going to be in the next year. Uh, we've got a lot to do on it. Um, I'm finding very quickly, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do as much as I had hoped, like all of it. I wanted to do all of the animation. 
I don't think that's going to be the case anymore. Um, Basically, it'll be ready when it's ready. Yeah, I'm trying hard not to give it a hard date because then uh, we're beholden to that. And we already have so much on the plate. Yeah. We've got a lot going on uh, with our business right now, and that's what's really kind of held us up. And, um, and so I try to work on it whenever I can. Uh, for a shot like this, won't you use a uh, perspective grid? No, I've, I've, I've got the perspective in my head. So in this case, I don't need to use it. So here is, he's turning and turning and looking away, looking, looking the other way. Do we get a cool signed certificate for attending your master class? <laughs> um, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> go out on a limb and say yes. <laughs> so there we go. So there's turning his head away, looking the other direction. I'm gonna have him raise his head up as well. Hey Aaron, have you seen the new Looney Tune car, uh, cartoon? And are you excited that they're coming back? I am excited. I've seen pieces of it, and I think it's awesome. They're bringing back Looney Tunes? Yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool. Uh, do I know James Baxter? Yes, I know James Baxter. Yep, we worked together at Disney for a long time. Uh, he was in California. I was in Florida. So we never... We were never uh, like best buds or anything, but we know each other. Or at least I hope he remembers me. <laughs> he might not remember me. Who knows? James is one of the best animators in the world. Absolute amazing. Would you recommend a specific time interval between two consecutive frames? I've watched the bouncing uh, tourist short and and the flow is very smooth. A specific no, your time interval is dictated by the uh, the speed that you're moving something across the frame. So there's no specific time interval that I recommend. It's just whatever whatever your animation is dictating. You know, it, it's not it's not a precise science it's 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 all about you know what the, the 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 mood that you're trying to get across and the emotion and all of that that's that's what dictates your timing is there any animal in particular that you struggle with uh, drawing or animating no <laughs> sorry no I mean there's animals I haven't I haven't drawn before but you know you don't if you, every animation's a struggle in general, I think. So there's that. But um, if you do your research, then you won't struggle as as much. Is that a draft skull behind you? It is a draft skull. Yes, actually one of my only real skulls. That's a real draft skull that I picked up. Right here. Oh. It weighs a ton. It's heavy. But this is it. That's a drought. I can't. This is just a skull, and they're <laughs> they're this heavy. But uh, yeah, they're it's a uh, they're massive. It's a big bull. Where'd you get that skull? I got it in a taxidermy shop in uh, Texas. So you didn't get that skull yourself out out there or anything? No. foot coming down there's that pelvis I'm always thinking about the pelvis and how it works here's the mid body shoulders you know as I'm talking to you guys and answering questions there's a lot of things going on in my brain that's why I get stuck sometimes talking to you 
is I'm trying to think of all these different parts working with, with one another and making sure that it's working in a realistic fashion. Uh, if given the chance, could The Legend of Tembo be brought back as a Disney movie? It would be awesome to see Disney produce another animal film, especially elephants. No, I don't want them to do it. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what if they got the rights to it but want you to direct it? Well, that, that's a no-brainer. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. How many second or frames were you required to do at, uh, at Disney? We had to do about five feet a week. I usually did about ten feet a week. And feet, uh, every foot and a half is a second. Cattens on YouTube asks, Hi Aaron, would you consider going to New York Comic Con this year or in the future? Oh. Uh, not, th when is it? I can't remember. Well, that's no good. I, I, I would love to go to Comic Con one year. Um, I'm sure it's a possibility. We just, uh, it's not something we have planned right now. I think the, the closer convention that we would be able to reach to um, would be Megacon in Orlando. All right. But even then, I don't know when when that is this year. I think it already passed. I think I might I might be wrong. And she won't let me Shit. So here I have him kind of looking away, looking up. So, Comic-Con San Diego will start on July 18th and ends on July 21st. Yeah, we're not going to that one. No. We're checking the Megacon. Uh, YouTube question. It's my dream to work for Disney, but I have no idea where to start on my path towards that. What could I be able to do that could give me a better chance at reaching that goal? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to start drawing a lot. I'm assuming you're a younger artist. Um, you know, think about colleges too that you might want to go to. Although, you know, college isn't the end all, uh, but they do help you get into the studios because uh, those studios recruit from colleges. Uh, and there's a certain number of there's a list of colleges that those the studios will re that that, ah, that they recruit from. Wow, oh. <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting words out today, making words. Yeah. Um, but it really, it really got, you know, look at their website. Go to Disney's uh, website, and there's a section as far as, you know, if you want to work for them, and they'll, they'll tell you what they look for. And Megacon already uh, passed, which was uh, last month. Was oh, that in New York? Uh, no, in Orlando. Oh. It was between the 16th and the 19th of May. So, so I'm just going to have, so I'm just having him turn his head. I'm going to have it come back around again. I'm going to go back to view, fit, see where we're at. So we're getting close to where I want him to pause. I want him to have no pun intended. <laughs> I want him to pause right here. You know. Can you describe the animation production process? Uh, <laughs> that's a big... The animation production... No, I can't. Not in... <laughs> not, not in two seconds. Nope. No, but the, the, the animation production process, it starts out you write the script, and uh, you get that script as good as you can, basically all in written form. From there, it needs to be storyboarded. A storyboard is a lot like a comic book, but they're, each drawing is seen sequentially, and we actually cut them to film. We put scratch dialogue, which is temporary dialogue. We have music, all that kind of stuff. We try to cut it together and watch it as a movie, but it's just in, in still storyboard form. That's a great advantage that we have in our process over live action because we can actually do what we call a dress rehearsal of the film by, by storyboarding it first. From there, we decide, we refine the movie 
uh, when the storyboards are done, you can see what's working and what isn't working, and you can go back and you have the luxury of rewriting. And a lot of times we'll rewrite and rewrite and reboard and rewrite until it's all feeling pretty good. At that point, those storyboards are ready to go into production. And so that at that point, we break up the movie. The movie is already broken up into sequences, and you take each one of those sequences and you lay them out. You have to figure out the camera moves. you got to figure out the backgrounds, where the characters are going to be, all of that kind of stuff. And then it's broken up into the layout artists, or at least from a 2D standpoint, the layout artists, which lay it out. And it goes then to the background artist and then to the... Uh, the animators, the background artists paint the background, the animators animate the characters, and then from the uh, from the uh, rough animation uh, section where the animators are being, or the characters are being animated, then it goes to the cleanup artist who then go through and redraw all of the characters, then they have to be painted and they get composited with the backgrounds that have been painted already, and then it's all shot on film, and you do that with every shot in the movie. And do, who, who, and does the, um, uh, for the music and for the voices, are those casted Cast. between, or are they cast between the storyboarding and the official animation? Yeah, a lot. Of, we try to cast the characters as early as possible. Um, it's always our goal to get the characters cast. If it, if it's if you get your characters cast too late, it can really hold up production. And so we try to find, you know, we in the pre-production stage when everything's getting designed, which I skipped over completely. Um, uh, during that time is when we're trying to do our casting. And so as the characters are being designed, we're trying to find the right actor to fill the role. Because I remember um, with Timbo, I acted as a, a scratch voice for, cer for yeah. certain characters, but um, didn't you end up uh, getting your voice actors like halfway through the storyboarding and you end up using their voices for, for sometimes, the storyboard? Sometimes, sometimes it, yeah, and then you can get them in on the storyboard process, which is great because then you have the ability to really get used to hearing that voice, and it, and it really kind of, uh, it, it helps. Uh, the New York Comic Con is actually on October 3rd through the 6th. Is when? October 3rd through the 6th. Oh. Martin on YouTube says, watching from my desk at Disney TV. Ah. Ha <laughs> ha. My old alma mater. I wasn't at Disney TV. I was at Feature Animation, but close enough. I love these videos, Aaron. Thank you. That makes me happy. That makes me very happy. Um, Dan on YouTube asks, which lessons would you recommend a total beginner start with on your website? Um, you know, you really can start with any of them. I've set them up for anybody at any skill level to come in and, and really start. Uh, I would recommend, if you're interested in animation, start with the, the, my fundamentals course and then move on from there. Uh, I've got a scene approach which you, you can hit afterwards and then I've got acting for animation so I've got a lot of different things to go on there and, and depending on what else you're looking for we've got all kinds of animal drawing, character design uh, we've got color theory we've got storyboarding, we've got a lot of different things so um, and it's really set up for any any skill level so he's slowly making his way across feeling very, he's, he's I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the way he's feeling right now as far as his bareness, um, I've seen bears wandering, and I've seen, uh, I've never seen a polar bear in the wild, unfortunately. And hopefully, before this is done being animated, <laughs> which would be really beneficial, Nick and I are going to try to get to Baffin Island. Uh, we won't make it this summer, but we're going to try to go next summer and uh, get to Baffin Island, which is uh, northeast Canada, uh, which is where we're setting this. Um, it's a huge, beautiful, dramatic island to the west of Greenland um, and uh, we want to get a lot of inspiration there so that's one of the things we want to do I didn't hear about that news yeah and hopefully see some some bears in the process so that's the that's the goal there if you're interested in seeing where we're basing this this story look up Baffin Island B-A-F-F-I-N Island and, uh, and you'll see some of the drama that is Baffin Island it's absolutely stunningly beautiful and uh, we're hoping to capture some of that beauty and Snow Bear. Uh, YouTube comment. I would love to see you animate a snake on a future stream. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here he is walking. And walking. I, I'm, I'm liking it so far. I'm liking that little head turn where he's looking away. I'm going to have him look away for a little bit. Sniff, sniff. Sniffing, looking away. And then right before... Right about when we get to this area, right in here, 
right right in this area right here I'm gonna have him pause and look look around and then and continue out right there right there right there yeah okay so let's pause it right there can you talk about doing the layout? Like how tied down do they have to be before you start to animate them? Well, your layout needs to be as tied down. Uh, if your character is gonna register with anything in the layout, then it's gotta be pretty tight. The rest of the layout can be rough, but anywhere where your character is gonna be making contact, obviously you need to have uh, a nice tight uh, area so that So that the registration uh, matches perfectly. All right, so I'm going to get back to this really quick. Make sure I'm on the right. I'm going to tie this down just a little bit more. You just put uh, just shared a YouTube video saying, "Aren't you jealous of this guy?" <laughs> Barcroft TV. Oh, the polar bear? Yeah. <laughs> In wrestling with the polar bear? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous and I'd be incredibly frightened at the same time. <laughs> but that's really cool. I think I've seen that video. Miss Blue Frost asks, Hi, do you ever worry that when you create stories for projects like Snow Bear that they aren't original enough? I worry about this even if I came up with the idea myself. Um, yeah, I do sometimes. And uh, so that's why I work hard at trying to make it, you know, give it a twist that feels original. And uh, because you, you don't want to do tell a story that everyone's seen a hundred times. You just, no one wants to do that. And so I'm always trying to find different ways of, you know, a lot of times the way to make your story unique is you know make it part of you you know what what story do you have to tell and so I'm always trying to you know tell it from my point of view and that really helps any tips for how to animate faster without losing quality you know what it's, it's time the only thing that's going to help with that is time You'll get better at it. You'll get more confident. Um, you'll you'll understand what it is that you're doing more and more with time. It's uh, it's like anything else. Anything that's a craft uh, or a trade, you know, it, they take year to years to master. And animation is one of those things. It takes a long time to master it, and uh, and you do get better with time. I want to make sure that I'm not animating right off the... I want to make sure he's still behind the edge. Would you ever consider animating an animal skeleton in a stream? I'm curious as to how you'd uh, bring that to life and how the body would move without the muscles and fur, etc. That's a really cool idea. I've never even thought of that. I've never done it before, and I never thought of it so I think that would be kind of fun to do that'd be really tricky too with all those moving parts I would break them up into groups keep that neck kind of bunched up up here Jana, uh, Jana on YouTube asks did you do 10 feet a week in full color or cleaned up lines or sketch now, I did 10 feet a week just in sketch. I was a rough animator. It was my, I was only responsible for the rough animation. I wasn't responsible for the color. Can you imagine if you had to do the color too on top of all that? Yeah, that would be tough. <laughs> so he's lifting his nose up. He's kind of looking away. Well, he's not kind of looking away. He's looking away. And for all the newcomers, you're... The current software you're using is a TV Paint, correct? Correct. TV Paint 11. 11! 11! 11! Eleven. 
Twitch question. When the bear's foot is in the snow, shouldn't the part of the leg you can see be moving slightly forward, slightly in other frames? Can't, shouldn't the part of the leg you can see be moving uh, somewhat? But I, keep in mind, too, he's he's. I've got an overlay here. So I'm not too worried about it, just as long as it feels planted. So that's what I'm worried about. Um, so it, it, it's all... It, it's going to be fine. It's not going to feel like it's sliding, if that's your question. So here, I'm going to bring this foot. My daughter is going into 10th grade. and she That's has, awesome. <laughs> she has a love for visual art. Uh, animation is what she wants to go into. Uh, we have started talking about colleges that she should look into. Uh, what do you recommend for her being she's 15 years old? Well, really, you know, what's great about stuff now is, you know, like this. I mean, she has the ability to sit and watch me and other animators on YouTube and other artists and that sort of thing at 15, which is something we never had when we were 15 years old. And so just the ability, the, the education that she has available at her fingertips before she ever goes off to college is huge and so I really recommend doing just that looking at other artists um, you know watching streams like this she'll pick up a lot um, and then if you can if you can swing it get her some animation software get her something that she can have some fun with and and learn with and uh, that that will help immensely. What color on the sketch pen do you use the most and why? Uh, just dark gray because it looks like a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch question. When the bear's foot is in the snow, shouldn't the part of the leg you can see... Oh, yeah. I just answered that one. I might have just thought of an interesting challenge. You did? Yeah. What if you tried draw, uh, you tried making an illustration of one of your characters like Nala or Raja, but you but, but you start uh, drawing with a white ink on a white background. What? So you have like you have to try through muscle memory to f to figure out where your lines are going, and when you think you're done, you darken the background to see what what comes out. Oh, of that's it. interesting. That's a fun. That's a, a. At first, I hated that idea, but now I like it. <laughs> it's kind of like what you and Alex did when you uh, when you had a look at each other and try to draw. Yeah. Like that, but with just a white on white. So here he is bringing his head back around. You talking about Cooper Schmidt? Yeah. Oh, Didn't yes. you and Cooper Schmidt have yeah. do that challenge to each other? We did. We did. Yeah. We used to do a lot of challenges like that. Uh, what software should she start with? The uh, if you can swing TV Paint, I would. I mean, if she really wants to be an animator, do TV Paint. It's, you know, it's a one-time purchase. You own it. You're How not, much is it? Uh, I, 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 there's a good student actually. <laughs> at the risk of sounding like I'm plugging myself, if you get a membership on our, on our, uh, on our website, you can get a really big discount on it. Um, Nick, I can't remember what the discount is. I think it's up to like thirty percent, something like that. Uh, Oh, Nick says, that's a cool idea, Dustin, but it might look sort of boring as far as actually watching it on the screen, because you don't, you don't actually see anything. That's funny. We might, we could make it a uh, YouTube special. There you go. Do you frequently animate straight ahead? 
I do if the if the action dictates it. I only I, I animate a lot of pose to pose, but only if you know if the if the acting is what dictates it. Most of my acting is done pose to pose. Anything that's action based is going to be straight ahead. This is all action based. There's a little bit of acting of him to kind of looking around and sniffing, but that's really there's not much to that. Are you going to leave a trail behind Snow Bear? Uh, no, because I'll show you. You're not going to see his feet. I'll show you what the way the overlay is going to be working. Really quick. Hold on one second. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Stay on target. <laughs> Stay on target. It just scratched the surface. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you probably answered this uh, before. Hold but on one second. Okay. I want to show. I want to answer the uh, the other. One. I just got to finish this drawing real quick. Shutting up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta finish this. Almost there. Okay. So let's go back to. Here, I'm going to turn on this layer. Now, if I come back, so you can see how he's hidden behind the other layer. He's just beyond the other side of the ridge. So you're not going to see his feet. So therefore, we're not going to have any uh, any of his um, footprints showing. So now, if I play it at speed, it's going to play a little slow. It's definitely playing slow, but... You get a sense of how he, what you'll see as he comes in. Oh, I like that little, that look, you know, the look around where he looks away and looks yeah. back. The student, the student version of TV Paint is available for two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, our creature art teacher dot com discount is almost forty percent off of all versions. So if you've got a membership to creature art teacher dot com. You will get a, a coupon uh, that's good for almost a forty percent discount on, cre on on TV Paint, which in itself basically pays for the membership. So it's really worth it, and uh, this is something that we worked out with TV Paint. Um, we've been really good friends with them for a while, and, and uh, it's I think it's a great deal. So if you uh, if you're looking for something to animate with TV Paint, for me is a great software. I love it. And um, uh, and if you get a membership to our website, you can get a huge discount on it. So uh, there you go. So here he is walking along. You know, as one thing you'll see as bear as polar bears wander, they're just always they're sniffing the air, and that's really what I'm trying to get here is that sense of him kind of looking around and sniffing and. And right as his head is coming back around, you're gonna, like I said, I'm going to have him pause right up in the upper left. Right up there. And this is also going to be a little bit of a title shot. So the, the word snow bear will come up in the big empty space in the foreground as he's walking across. Now we're talking, Nick and I have been talking about doing this in a really even further longer shot um, and, uh, and we might experiment with that as well. YouTube question, another animator I watch on this platform made a video talking about how working without an onion skin or light box can improve your work. Do you have any thoughts on that? I totally agree. Uh, I just, when I'm flipping paper, I can flip five pieces of paper at a time and uh, and that works great for me. I, I don't have that ability on on uh, TV paint, it, 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 not exactly in the same way. I go back and forth when I'm hitting my arrow keys, and so I found that using the onion skin 
uh, helps me keep the characters consistent. But as far as seeing the movement, I try to see it without the onion skin, and I do completely agree with that. And that's how I was trained. I was never trained with a light table or anything like that. I was trained by flipping, flipping the paper and really trying to see the movement in that way. Um, that's a much better way of doing it because one way it becomes very methodical. You're looking at lines between lines. The other way you're seeing form and you're animating the form. And so it's much better to understand the form as it moves across rather than the lines that make up the form. So that's my, that's my advice on there. And yes, I agree with that, that very much. Taylor on YouTube asks, what made Glenn Keane's animation so special in your opinion? Uh, his animation had the most heart of any animator that I'd ever seen before. The, the spirit that he put into every stroke, every drawing, um, really, uh, it really spilled over into the collection of drawings that made a shot sing. And so when you looked at the beast emoting, screaming, yelling, laughing, when you look at Ariel and her songs and things like that, they came from such, uh, there's so much life in them because Glenn really kind of imbued them with that life. He put, when Glenn animated these characters, he became those characters and he really put that life into them. And every drawing is just a beautiful piece of art. Uh, and, and then when you put those drawings to, together with, you know, all the other drawings that make up a shot, it was really something special. I so, have, go ahead. Um, I have a question uh, about the, uh, uh, well, when you're dealing with foregrounds. Yeah. Um, like for scenes that has a foreground that the character is hiding behind, like such this? as like this or like uh, like when Kodo is hiding behind the rock when you first meet uh -huh. him or when Mulan is undressing behind the yep. behind the towel. Um, does the animator animate the full the full character body and then they just put it put the foreground up front or do they cut those areas off for the um, it depends. Like in this off. case, I'm trying. I'm animating a little bit more. That gives me the ability to move the character around if I want to move it up or down. Yeah. Sometimes we won't know how much we're going to be show, uh, cutting out, and so we'll animate more than we need to. Other times it'll be really rock solid, and we'll say, okay, that that layout element's not going to move. So you know, don't animate any more than you need to. So we might animate a tiny fraction behind the element. So that way it so saves that have, time. Yeah, you have coverage. Yeah, and you save time that way. But also, you you know, sometimes if a character has complex movement, like down here, with the bear walking up, even though we're only seeing the top of his back, I want to make sure that that back is convincing that it feels like he's walking. So I'll animate the whole walk just to make sure that it feels like he's walking. Cute. Cute. Say cute whip. Whip. Say whip. Say whip. You're using a TV paint on Cintiq? <laughs> <laughs> yes, just, it is a Cintiq. So, sorry, someone just uh, someone just wrote, How many puns does Aaron say a day? Would you say it's an unbearable amount? <laughs> that was so <laughs> bad. And I think our cameras are frozen up again because I, I switched over to the set cam to show the Cintiq. And... Oh. Um, well, then just pl yeah. unplug it from the source, I guess. And do that again. But mm -hmm. I, I, well, so I think what this happened, isn't frozen though, right? No, that, no, no, that's fine. But what I think, what I think it is that every time your your webcam turns off and then comes back on again, these two cameras freeze up. But don't know why the webcam's been doing that. It's been only been started doing that. I wonder if it's some weird connection somewhere. Maybe we have to find this horse. Is all what? this for your upcoming movie? What? The snow bear animation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing today. Snow bear animation. <laughs> so here I want to get that back line just right. Nice big step right here. So it went Star Wars with our <laughs> almost there. 
I've never seen a Star War. Never seen a Star War? <laughs> it's still raining? Yep. It started raining at 8.30 this morning. We got the tropics happening. Yeah, we had some intense winds this morning, too. Do you think it's that it's still possible to work, make a living as a 2D animator? Uh, sure I do. It definitely is in Europe. People are doing it. The Cartoon Saloon, they're doing it. And also a lot of uh, YouTubers do a lot of 2D animation. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that they're making a living at it, though. Yeah, it might be, uh, it might be difficult, but um, if I have anything to say about it, I'm going to try to bring 2D back. There's a lot of guys over at Netflix that are trying to do it right now. You know, Netflix is hiring people like crazy. 2D animation. So it's not dead. Alan Thomas writes, Hi Dustin. Hi Alan. <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Alan. 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 <laughs> Alan! Alan! <laughs> Have you ever animated any of your pets for fun? No. But that's a cool idea. <laughs> that there's a cool idea. Be a lot cooler if I did. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> there we go. When in betweening, are you most of the time thinking in halves and thirds, or do you have some other method? No, most of the time it's halves and thirds, um, unless I'm doing you know a really quick slow in, a hard slow in, then you know then I'm really favoring a drawing, but it's usually halves and thirds, and mostly halves. I try to keep everything down as close to halves as possible. I hate doing thirds. And the, the and it's funny now that I've said that, everything I'm, I'm drawing right here, all of my in betweens, every single in between, or has thirds. to be on thirds. Because <laughs> I, I always try to uh, avoid sixes as much as possible, uh, putting you know drawings on held on sixes. Because when you in between that, you have to do it on thirds. Uh, but the the rate that I wanted to him have him walk across was kind of worked out to be on, on sixes, and so that's what I went with. Have you uh, a Twitch question. Aaron, in your 20s, when you started animating, was there a subject matter or style of animation that was particularly challenging to get good at? Well, I mean, I think the Disney style, because that's where I worked. So it was a Disney style that just... And for me, the Disney, the quote Disney style is just... It's, it's good animation that... Uh, mimics life it's got you know solid physics and, and appeal and all of that that's you know when people say the disney style that's what that says to me and um and so that's that was for me that was my job so that was the challenge have you ever ever animated dustin for fun uh i did indirectly i did the oh my Oh my. I did, you know, not Dustin, a caricature of Dustin, but Dustin as a voice. I did. You did that one and also the rat, the, hey, dummy, put your god away. Oh, that's the right, rat. yeah. But I think my favorite is that, the line, the, oh my. <laughs> to be you a YouTube discussion? question. To be a good animator, do you need to be a draftsman, an artist, or a bit of both? Uh, yes. You have to be both. To me, a good draftsman is a good artist. So... Yeah. To be a good 2D animator, I should say. And it depends on the style, too. I mean, you, you know, there are 2D animators that that, uh, that don't draw very well, but, you know, they their style, they don't, they, I, let me take it back. They don't draw very well in a, in a traditional sense, but they have a style that's really cool and they animate really entertaining stuff. And so that, I love that kind of stuff. Are you going to clean up this animation, or do you tend to keep it rough? I'm going to keep it rough. You can see I animate pretty clean anyway. So this is how... Super clean. Super clean. So it's going to stay pretty clean. It'll stay like this. I want to keep the... the, the I like keeping that line alive. Uh, 
<laughs> is having a degree in animation as important as having a good portfolio, or would you would a good portfolio be enough? A good portfolio is always enough. No one cares about a degree in animation. I don't have a degree. Half the guys I worked with never got degrees. No, you don't need a degree in animation. You need a great portfolio. You need to show that you can do the work. That's what's important. What was one of the goofiest or funniest in between animation frames you've done? Um, well, I've done so. There's some funny ones on Roger Rabbit, you know, just you know, because he gets stretched so much. Um, and then there's stuff that I hid. You know, uh, I've, t I've talked about this one before when Raja is turned into a kitten in Aladdin and then he turns back at the end when he turns back into an adult. I turned him into Mickey Mouse for about two frames. Um, you know, we did little things like that all the time, but in general it was just, you know, just get the work done. <laughs> YouTube question. Any tips for someone who can draw animals well but is struggling to draw humans? Draw more humans. <laughs> That's all I got to tell you. How did you get good at drawing animals? You drew a lot of animals. Well, it's the same thing with humans. Draw more humans. The only way you get good at anything is... There we go. I'm just sorry, sorry, I'm raising my head up. The only way you get good at anything is to do it. You want to be a good baseball player? You play a lot of baseball. You know, it's it's one of those things. I had someone ask the other day, you know, what good book, are there any good books out there on observational drawing? I just said, just get out there and draw observationally. That's how you're going to get good. A book isn't going to help you. Not in the way that doing it, I should say. Not in the way that doing it is going to help you. What's your thought on photorealistic art? Is like, not the process, but the idea. Impressive or a bit pointless? No, I don't think anything, any form of art is pointless. An artist, even if even if it's for the artist to get some kind of emotional charge out of, you know, not all art has to be for the viewer. To me, most art is, is for me, the, the enjoyment of, of creating art, for me, is the process of doing it. I couldn't, I couldn't give two whatever is about whether someone likes my art or not so there's no such thing as pointless art and I and when people say that about um, realistic art to me they're just showing their ignorance so there's a lot of beautiful very beautiful representational art out there and uh, and so and including photo reel and uh, so that to me, I think it, all art is is good to some degree, even if it's for the artist that did it. If it's something they enjoyed, you know, if you hate it, if, if it's some guy, you know, <laughs> dropping enemas down a down a, a a canvas, which is what I've seen. Hey, more power to you. I I don't want that hanging in my house, and I don't consider it art myself. But if this guy's having fun doing it, doing it, then great. <laughs> you know? Something stinks in here. <laughs> But um, but that being said, that's an extreme example. That's not exactly the example I would give. But um, you know, that's my opinion on realistic art, photo real art. So I got to get him to pause now. So I want to get him into a pose. When you get yeah, and I'm just I'm actually just gonna kind of move through the pose. I'm gonna have him slow down. Uh, maybe put them on eights. YouTube question. Have you seen former Disney animator and my animation teacher, Za, recently? Yeah, I saw her. Well, it wasn't recent. How long ago were we, were we in Portland, Nick? That was the last time I saw Za. So maybe two years ago? Nick, answer the thing. Nick? Nick, do the thing. But I've seen, I saw Za. Za used to be one of our backup singers in our band. She was an awesome singer. <laughs> Did you know uh, Janine Breaker? No. Uh, I think that's her name. She wor She works for Glen Keane. No. Huh. huh. Strange. Strange, yeah. Strange. Now that is real strange. <laughs> Working on 
my on my Jason Statham a little bit. That was pretty good, actually. Do it again. Now that's real strange. Uh, now you gotta get a little bit more gravel. A little more, yeah. I think the I think the line I can do best of his is when um is in what was it snatch? Uh-huh. When um he and his buddy are um are at this uh, uh trailer house. Like it looked like it was like a caravan. It was like a caravan, it was like under a bridge or something and it had a messed up door. Yeah. And and his partner is like, What's wrong with it? And Statham tears the door off and goes, Nothing to me. It's tip top. <laughs> tip top. It's tip top. <laughs> Nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the best line I can I can do of his. Yeah. So here I'm not even gonna finish that out. So I'm gonna let that come down. I want to bring him up. to bring that head around. I was told by an art teacher that if I did realism wildlife art that my art would look just like everyone else's. It was kind of hurtful. Well, that's an art that's an art teacher that doesn't uh, that's ignorant. <laughs> I'll just tell you straight up. Look at all the wildlife art that's out there and look at all the representational art and tell me that it's all the same. And if you think it's all the same, then your eye is wrong. Because I personally know that it's not. And I've seen a lot of beautiful artwork out there. Anytime an art teacher puts uh, parameters on you, uh, uh, Especially art teachers that tell you, you know, don't do realism and things like that. That that really bugs me. And now you can you can get in there and express yourself and do all you know, create any kind of art you want. But to tell somebody you can't do don't do something like this because it's not real art, that's bullshit. Sorry, but that's just, that's just <laughs> that bugs me. You just said a curse word. <laughs> That right there is just a whole bunch of bull turd. All right, so I'm going to go back again. I'm actually going to get one more drawing in. When drawing on your sketchbook or painting, do you find yourself pressing buttons as if you're using your tablet? Happens to me sometimes. <laughs> I um, I have hit the undo. I've tried to hit the undo a couple of times. Have you? Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> What's your view of tracing? Oh, I can see right through it. <laughs> what? See what I did there? What's your view of tracing? Uh, so I just see, did a dad joke on it. You see right through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in relation to what? I don't. I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're asking me. As a buffalo said to the little calf. Bye, son. son. <laughs> <laughs> What's my view of tracing? Uh, I don't know. You can. Tracing maybe like when you're watching a when you're watching a movie or something and you're trying to or I mean, maybe like a form of rotoscoping. I don't know. I, I I don't know what what they're asking in relationship to. Nick, figure out the thing. <laughs> I've traced a lot of stuff in my day. I trace on here all the time to keep the the. The uh, volume's consistent. I'm not quite sure what you're asking in relationship to. Didn't you meet Tracy Morgan? Yeah, <laughs> Tracy Morgan. 
I know him. So here I want to have him pause. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Pause. Nick says, I think there's nothing wrong with tracing for younger artists, but it's not something you would want to pass off as your own work. Well, yeah, there's that. I mean, if that's if that's what the question is, I guess that's what, what it's in relationship to. I wasn't quite sure what they were trying to ask as far as what the tracing is. But, yeah, I mean, I think people can learn by, by tracing something. You can definitely learn uh, as a young artist how something is put together how much time do you think it'll uh, take to finish this uh, snow bear project at least a year at least yeah at bare min minimum at bare minimum hey Aaron can you please Hi. do a watercolor next live stream it was a while now since you did that. Sure. We'll just need to hope that these cameras don't freeze up again. Yep. We gotta make sure our hardware is working. Our hardware. This drawing is fighting me. It's fighting me. Stop fighting. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm pretty much getting to the end, or I, I need to take a break. This is the end. Yeah. My only friend, the yeah. end. Nice. Thank you. I feel like I should. Uh, Nick says that is what they were asking. There are some people out there that say. Tracing is wrong. There is no, to me, there's no wrong or right in art. You know, that's, it cracks me up when people say that. It depends, you know, if you try to pass it off as your own, then sure, that's not ethically right, but there is, there's no right or wrong in, in art. It's whatever, whatever method you can use to get by to learn is going to be great. Logan asks, have you ever heard of Tyrus Wong? I sure have. Tyrus Wong was an amazing art director. He was responsible for the look of Bambi. Made some amazing kites, too, believe it or not. Really? Kites? He lived to be 106 years old. Wow. You know who I, do you know who I think is going to live a lot longer? Hmm. The one and only Jim Jackson. Jim Jackson. Wasn't he the 11th man on the moon? He was. Big animator over at uh, Blue Sky now. Yeah. That drawing, I'm not, uh, I'm not liking it. Let me, uh, let me go to fit screen. I'm going to have him pause right through there. Put that eight for eight frames. Eight frames. So how many bear puns can you use until the stream ends? Uh, quite a few. Just thinking about that, I don't know if I can bear it. Bing. There we go. I think that's feeling pretty good. Now I'm gonna just have him kind of slow through that pose, and uh, and then walk on out. But what I would do from this point is, uh, as he walks through, um, I'll fin obviously finish a animating him through, and then uh, and then I just go through and start throwing the in betweens in. And uh, I might be doing that on the next live stream. I didn't even get a chuckle out of that one. Yeah. Tough so before I go, I want to remind <laughs> you guys that, um, once again, August 3rd and 4th is our big live event. And if you guys can be there, uh, it would be awesome. We're going to be at the Repertory Theater in downtown Orlando, right next door to the, um, the Art Museum, uh, Orlando Art Museum. Hold on, let me make this bigger. There we go. Right next door to the Orlando Art Museum and the Orlando Science Center, um, our uh, live event is going to be the third and the fourth 
I'm going to be doing live demos on animation, a character design. We're going to be talking about story, story structure. We're going to talk about some of the ups and downs of my career and what, what to avoid, what to embrace, all kinds of different things. And I think you guys would really enjoy it. So once again, that's August 3rd and 4th. So go to creatureartteacher.com backslash Orlando 2019. And if you're a student or a teacher, you can get up to $50 off on those tickets. So uh, go and check it out, creatureartteacher.com backslash uh, Orlando 2019. Can barely and, uh, wait for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and if you're interested in, in you know, any of the courses, if you want to learn animation, character design, some of the things that I talk about on here, then just check out our website altogether, creatureartteacher.com. We're full of stuff on there. There's a lot of great things to choose from. And, um, and this once again, this, this software, TV Paint software, the software that I'm using right now to animate with, if it's something that you're interested in purchasing, remember, if you get a, uh, a, a membership to our website, then you are eligible for up to a, almost a 40% discount on TV Paint. And so that in itself almost pays for the membership. So that's... It's a pretty good deal. We're pretty happy with it. Is your voice okay? No, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it. I start, I've been talking for two hours. And then the other thing, too, I want to remind you guys of is this weekend. Uh, and that's, it's actually active right now. We've got a big sale going on. It's the Buy More, Save More sale at Creature Art Teacher. Uh, the more you buy, the more you save. If you buy one item, you'll save 20%. Buy two, you'll save 30 Buy four, or buy three, you'll save 40 So... Um, By 10, you'll get 100. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's all happening over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast. I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to get going. But um, this was a lot of fun. I always love animating you know, <laughs> but, uh, with you guys, and uh, uh, it's where my roots are. And so um, that and illustration. So you know, anytime I have the ability to do that with you guys, I love it. So I hope you guys learned something today. And like I always say, we're artists. So go out and put some beauty back into the world because uh, that's what we're definitely in need of. And put your grocery cart away. Do anything, any little thing. That's the point I'm trying to make. Little things add up. And if you could do some little nice things throughout the day, if we all did them, that would add up to a, a lot of really great things. So go out there and put some beauty back in the world. And with that, Dustin... See you guys later. Is he frozen? <laughs> 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 Perfect shot. That is perfect. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week as I stare into your souls. Oh, by the way, we had ice cream last night, and the girl serving ice cream had a Cowboy Beat Pop shirt on. Oh, did they? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Awesome. And uh, speaking of which, as always, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys. <laughs>